Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tech Table Talks. This week, what we're talking about is the Dropbox problem. And uh, welcome, everybody. Looking forward to having you on the show today. And um, hi, wanted to say hello to you. And uh, just uh, starting to get started. We're having a couple more people join the room. And um, welcome. Welcome. And uh, I think the place that I want to start with everybody right now is um, just just a little bit actually of agenda keeping. I have a couple of different polls, but I'm going to wait till some more people join the room. Um, but just to show you guys what we have on the agenda for today, we have the Dropbox problem. And the Dropbox problem is going to cover just a, a couple of different points, which is what, uh, why are employees using Dropbox? And that also that Dropbox isn't referring to the company as much as the use of consumer grade file sync. What are the dangers and risks associated with using these services? And uh, what do consumer grade, uh, what to do about consumer grade file sync in the work workplace? What alternatives are available, especially if you're a regulated individual, but any business needs to be using a business grade file sync. These consumer grade products present a number of inherent dangers and we'll, we'll cover that. And lastly, we'll finish up with what we do recommend that you do. So the first place that I wanted to start, it, start with was uh, why are employees using Dropbox? The, on a typical day, Employees are using Dropbox uh, to communicate with a number of different parts of their, their work environment. That, uh, that everybody has these bring your own devices. That part of what happens with just where we've gotten with smartphones, with, um, with the computers when we get them and all of these sorts of services is that they're now Dropbox that came installed on my telephone. I actually can't get it off of my telephone. Um, they, they end up putting this service in all sorts of places to be convenient, but they're also using a freemium model. And I think that's really important that Dropbox gives you just a couple of gigs to start. Um, same with iCloud, you know, the, the iCloud has, you know, they give you what, two or four gigabytes for free, something like that. And you don't actually have enough data on there to even back up the iPhone that you just got. And so it's a little bit of a bait and switch to just start to be using the premium service from out the gate. And um, I wanted, now we got a couple more people on the call here. I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions. Um, the first question I have for everybody is how are you regulated? And um, there, kick that off for me. And just if you could let me know if you're a SEC regulated individual, if in a regulated individual or a hybrid. Um, the services that I'm going to talk about at the end, there's just there's different document retention needs that the people who are regulated by FINRA need to have what's called um, worm formatting, which means write once, read many times. These laws were created back in the days of CDRs when we were burning disks. And so that's sort of the paradigm that they're thinking of, that you take a record, you burn it onto there, and the, it's it's in stone at that point and that the regulators can go in and they can take a snapshot at any different point in time. Part of what's happened with how computers have evolved and networking has evolved is that we have we have all these cloud enabled devices that we keep many versions of everything and that we don't necessarily have this revisioning technology and that's actually one of the big problems with a number of these consumer grade services. I am going to hop back over to our presentation here. And um, so guys, the, the bring your own device trend and policies and in, in increasingly work, increasingly mobile workforce are, they're putting new pressures on your IT department. They're changing the requirements of how workers want and need to access corporate data. Workers need to connect across distances, especially if they're working remotely and not just with coworkers. The, they also need to be working with customers, with suppliers, um, and on, on an average day. And that you as a business owner or as a, someone who's running an organization, whatever your role is, that you need to know what it is that they're doing. And these consumer grade services don't give you the insight it is that, that you're really going to need. And so the first question we need to ask ourselves is why are employees using Dropbox? And there's, there's four primary reasons that you can see. Um, you know, the, it's Dropbox is easy to use. It's, it's 
it's free. It's it's what I have at home, and that it's it's already on my device. And so why try to use something new? Well, and and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, you know, Dropbox is recognized as the first company that made cloud sync, cloud file sync, simple and free. And today they have 300 million users, or at least as of May in 2014, and the service is one of the fastest growing in the world. But amidst this rapid adoption, a lot of business owners, you know, you need to ask yourself, is Dropbox safe for my business to use? And so, you know, it's there, it's in front of your employees, and all these reasons explain why Dropbox is popular among consumers. But at the same time, they don't justify the major security risks that come from the free versions of Dropbox, um, which brings us to our last reason why people use Dropbox, which is they don't know any better. Um, you know, Dropbox free service lacks the security, the administrative oversight, the productivity features that a business really needs. And any, biz any business that uses Dropbox exponentially increases the risk of their data being lost, of being stolen, or being shared with the wrong parties. And if you deal with confidential data, this is a liability concern. Um, we frequently meet business owners that will say, but I use Dropbox at home. And the overarching theme that just because something is good for personal use or for one employee does not mean that it's good for your business and organization as a whole. Um, you know, personal needs vary substantially from business needs, especially as it relates to data and security. Your business is your livelihood, and your data of the, and your data is of quintessential importance. You know, there's a good reason why you need to use the the basic lock and key in the home of your front door, and the same thing in an alarm system, and the same thing is true with your virtual office space. And so. You know, the bring your own device problem is really, and also the bring your own cloud problem, that it just creates hegemony amongst employees and organizations, that you need to have something that's coherent. You also need something that is purposed for your organization. The Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, there's different access issues with each one of them. But, you know, things like, having an employee who leaves your office, actually getting them unshared off of a Google Drive document that they own, a Google Sheet. Um, also, the ability for someone who to unshare you out of an organization. Um, you know, did you know that, you know, do you know what files are in which company's Dropbox folders? Do you know how to get them back if that, company, if that employee ends up leaving the firm? You know, even if a employee while you're working together, it's a completely congenial situation, you know, that doesn't mean when someone leaves, memories tend to be short. I've definitely taken over positions where I had to rely pretty heavily on the person before me. And it was clear that within a month, less than a month, that you know, his memory was fading and that I quickly was needing to take up those roles and, and put in those tasks and that my bosses were looking to me to ask him for future, for questions on how things were needed to be done. And, and the truth is, is that, you know, memories fade quickly. And, um, you know, and he didn't know after a pretty short period of time. So these are, this, this is the typical situation that we're looking at here. And um, what, we're, what we're seeing is the normal public clouds, the public clouds that all of us use and the different ways that we use those clouds. And, um, here, hold on just one second. I need a moment of housekeeping. Um, oh, hi, Michael. And, um, you know, on a typical day that we're, we're typically, you know, that we have our in-office file servers, that we have email, um, you know, that we have content management that we're doing with our CRMs, and that most of these services, uh, you know, they're backing us up. And like if you're a Redtail user, for example, I actually want to reach out and ask them what their backup policies are because, uh, you know, it's important to be able to have a fallback that just because you have your information in the cloud, that's, that's great. Um, but there was an article by Ed Jertson probably less than a month ago where he was talking about security concerns and that he felt that, 
there wasn't any, and none of these cloud services really met his security concerns, especially when it came to uh, the broker dealer regulated individuals and that the BD regulated individuals really need to probably have a file server on site or at least, you know, the ability to have your data f present with you. And, um, you know, a lot of the consumer grade services just simply don't offer that level of complexity and it opens you up to a number of possible number of perils you know specifically the peril of data theft um you know data loss and i'll go into each of these more in a minute corrupted data you know how you can expose yourself to lawsuits through liability concerns um, making yourself vulnerable to compliance violations either through poor record keeping or just not having what it is that you need at the end of the day um, oh, and it looks like we're, no one is FINRA regulated, but half of us are SEC regulated and half of us are other folks. Interesting. Um, that's, that's really interesting there, folks. And, um, you know, something else that happens with these uh, consumer grade services is that there's a loss of accountability and there can also be a loss of file access. And this is really just an organizational problem where someone doesn't necessarily have, the, the organization admin doesn't have the oversight that they need. Um, and I just wanted to check in with everybody. Do these, what I've said so far is this, uh, you know, do you get what the Dropbox problem is? Do you get what, that there are problems with this consumer grade services and that there are, uh, and that there is a business grade service that is going to probably be a better fit for you as for you and your firm. And just could you chime that into the uh, chat window there and just, you know, let me know if I if you'd like me to explain these differences more or uh, if you guys are all on the same page. Um, and in the meantime, I'm just going to keep on moving forward. And um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about here is data theft. And so you know, most of the problems with Dropbox really emanate from a lack of oversight. Uh, business owners don't, they're not privy to the instance of Dropbox that's an installed on each individual com uh, uh, computer of their employee. So they're unable to control which device an employee can or cannot sync their corporate data to. Um, you know, the use of Dropbox can open the door for company data to being synced without approval across personal devices and, um, and pro proliferation through these devices, um, which can accompany it. They might not be secure, that you want to have the data be secure on your device in transit, that you want to have, you know, if an employee's phone gets stolen, that can be a, a compliance concern for you as a compliance officer or a business owner. And, um, and even if it's your device, the, the ability to go in and to wipe that data off remotely is one of the features that you really want from a business grade file sync. The second concern is data loss. Um, when administrators can't manage and monitor the file sync activities across an organization, then risk losing that critical data. If an employee or a group of employees adopts Dropbox and then starts using it to sync and share sensitive data um, and do it without the administrator's proper oversight, um, you end up getting data sprawl. The, you know, the, the administrator can't initiate remote wipes in cases where devices get turned over, rather that they get lost, stolen, whatever have you. And so an organization admin and you know, a compliance officer can't guarantee that the files have been properly shared properly and just with the right people. It also opens you up to, the, there, there are concerns around uh, corrupted data. A uh, study by CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, saw that silent data corruption was observed in one out of every 1,500 files. The Dropbox and other consumer-grade file sync services disclose few, if any, details about how they prevent data corruption from occurring. And a true business-grade file sync service cryptographically tags every piece of data and redundantly stores it on multiple data centers that are private to your organization. Um, on racks that eliminate just through the redundancy any chance of that corruption from occurring and that you as an end user don't actually end up seeing any of those uh, corrupted files and that you just always have your data there and at 100%. Consumer grade file sync can also expose you to lawsuits. 
Dropbox gives carte blanche and power to your employees over the ability to permanently delete and the ability to share files. And this can result in the permanent loss of critical business documents, as well as the sharing of confidential information and breaking of privacy agreements um, that you have in place with your clients and with third parties. It also exposes you to compliance violations. The many compliance policies requires that the files be held for a specific duration and that they can only be accessed by certain people. For those of you who are SEC regulated, I believe that you need to retain all documents for three years, but you don't necessarily have the worm policy if you need to have the right ones read many times. Um, however, I got to say it's handy. Um, those of you who are WordPress users are one of the places that I think that you'd see this uh, really dialed in where you can go back to any point in time, you can see where a file is presently, where a page is presently, and you can roll it back to yesterday, to two months ago, to a year ago, and you can see, and if a compliance officer comes into that situation, for example, you can show them exactly what a page looked like on a given day, and you want to do the same thing with your data, that you want your data to just, you know, I want to see what it looks like on May 15th, uh, yes, sir. Here you go. And, um, and making that nice and easy for you. Um, you know, in these cases, it's imperative to employ strict control over how long the files are kept and also who can access them. You know, uh, especially with the FINRA regulated individuals, you do want to make sure to have third party access provided to the client or the recipient of a document um, in perpetuity and um, to do that and also secure access. So you need to provide a login portal where they can get access to that information. You know, Dropbox has loose and almost non-existent re file retention policies and file access controls and just it really isn't what you're going to need as a business owner. This is one of the big problems that can happen and uh, it seems innocuous at first until when you are the person who has lost data, um, you know, anyone who has been victim of not pressing the save button at the right moment, you know, you, you know what this looks like. And most of our Microsoft Word and the rest of it that autosave was put in long ago to try to prevent this pain and misery, but that doesn't mean that it can't still happen. And it, it can happen through your computer gets stolen to it falls off your lap while you're working on it late at night and breaks the hard drive, whatever have you. And you need to still be able to get access to that information. Um, it's also possible for an employee as they leave the firm that if you don't cleanly um, take that data away from them, which usually takes a lot of time, that that employee can walk off with your IP and you also might, it might walk away with them. Um, it's one thing to have an employee still have information that you wish they didn't and you might not have control over that, but what you do have control over is making sure that you still have access to your information. So I, I want to play a quick game of did you know? And um, did you know that Dropbox is the number one most commonly blacklisted app in a file service? Um, hold on, let me get one look at the questions for a second. Okay, Michael, yep, we're, we're getting right there. And, um, you know, in general, the bring your own device trend and the bring your own cloud trend um, and the advent of these mobile applications has made employees more productive, but at the same time what comes with, these, with this mobility is that there's some applications that a company should avoid and this is one of them. You know, Dropbox shares can be accessed by anybody and the sharing with Dropbox is easy. Protecting your files with Dropbox, not so easy. Getting your information back after it's been shared, almost impossible. And when a user shares a file or folder, Dropbox actually creates a public URL. And so that file can be accessed by anybody without a password and you don't know who it is. Um, in a study conducted by Intralinks, these, these fully clickable URLs, which were used to access sensitive files, including income tax returns, mortgage applications, bank information, and personal photos, Intralinks found evidence of intermingling of personal and corporate files. All of this begs the question, when you share files and folders on Dropbox, who are you actually sharing it with? 
Um, also, Dropbox only entertains deleted files and revisions for 30 days. And so if you have an immediate issue, you might be able to revert that back. But uh, if it's gone past you noticing for a little while, you might be out of luck. Um, business class file sync maintains a rich file and folder history so that companies may recall historical data, including deleted files and revisioning information. Moreover, um, retention of data is important for the business to handle sensitive data and legally required for certain industries such as uh, broker dealers and financial advisors. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act, the federal rules for civil procedures, tax laws, and other federal and local statutes have distinct requirements for the retention of data. Dropbox's decision to permanently remove deleted files from revisions after 30 days is inconvenient and it puts, it puts businesses at risk of legal and compliant disputes. If Dropbox Dropbox customers want to retain deleted files for revisions for more than 30 days, they're directed to download and pay for a third-party application to be able to accomplish that. Um, also, Dropbox only uses a single key for encryption across everybody. When a user drop uploads a file, Dropbox will review the data and will see that it's been uploaded by a different user um, and we'll review the data to see if it's been uploaded by a different user. And if it's been uploaded before, Dropbox deduplicates that technology to the point where, you know, you don't actually know where that came from. Uh, from a system level, they don't know where it came from in the first place. And Dropbox isn't saving two files, but it doesn't help your compliance situation. Um, according to Dark Reading and from, from Information Week, uh, deduplication can make it easy for outsides to know what's already on the Dropbox uh, on Dropbox servers. Since website studies, uh, since the website studies a file to see if it's been seen before, um, the deduplication technology imposed by Dropbox saves them storage costs, but it it places your files at risk. And well. Dropbox also doesn't guarantee their uptime, and they offer life support for the paid service, but you also have to have five account minimum in order to sign up with the Dropbox for business. Um, so when you're looking at that sticker price, you do need to multiply that by five off the top. Um, and if you have three employees, then you, know, you are going to have to pay more for that service. Um, and also uh, FAQs and forums, they're just not good enough with what they have over there. You know, Dropbox, because they don't offer live support, uh, you'll have to fill out a form for someone to get back to you and the, they make, might get back to you and they might not, you know, and also they might understand your question, but you definitely don't have a personal relationship with them that allows you to actually communicate a more intricate question to them rather than just trying to get through, hey, is this functioning how it's supposed to, it's supposed to yes or no? Um, hold on one second, I wanna. Okay, also, um, something else they found in this study is that a bug in the company's authentication mechanism allowed third parties to log into third into other user accounts and access files which you know that's a breach of uh, file access and it allows attackers to penetrate accounts used by Dropbox employees um, including a document from which they may have been able to harvest email addresses or account numbers um, you know, the, in this case, those email addresses were apparently used to send Dropbox users spam information. Um, in March of that same year, in 2011, Dropbox also suffered an outage which caused errors and rendered the desktop and mobile sync features useless for a substantial period of time. And in light of these events, and the lack of live support from this large corporation, you know, just that's the sort of service that you can end up expecting from these sorts of companies. So one thing I wanted to ask the group here, give me just a moment while I hop over and start another poll. I wanted to ask what service folks on the call are using. So if you could go in and uh, I tried to list all the major obvious ones. Uh, Box and Sharefile are both at least starting into, they are business grade services and, um, and do at least start to help compliant individuals uh, manage their life. So, um,
Do you know how to prevent Dropbox in the first place? You know, enabling your employees is important, but minimizing this file anarchy with the consumer grade service is also more important. That's something I've seen with individuals who've gotten onto ComConnect is that there's often more than one consumer grade file sync service used, which just means that you have no idea where a file is and you don't know what sort of retention capabilities and extra features are a part of that process. Um, the main ways that you can prevent and work with using consumer grade prop or consumer grade products in the workplace is first of all just creating a formal policy against them and communicating this formal policy to team leaders and asking them to enforce that policy. Um, you know, some groups do block this application of the company firewall. Um, I actually have one client on ComConnect, but that's part of why he used ComConnect, that the uh, part where it, it goes through firewalls and file sync uh, is a, a handy feature. And, um, and it makes it so that you want, you want to be able to, my opinion, you don't want to block the consumer grade products, what you want to do is encourage them to use it for their personal life. And that you want them to understand that as a business owner, that you need your employees and you need yourself to have this information all in one place. And, um, and that is where we introduce your own personal cloud with ComConnect File Sync. The ComConnect file sync, this is my product that I'm offering, and I would love to have you guys join on with it, but I'm going to let you know a little bit more about this first. And, um, oh, Rob Oliver says he doesn't see the new poll. Give me a second there. Um, so let me know what it is that you guys use. Do you use Dropbox? Do you use Google Drive, OneDrive? Um, just so you know, in my personal scenario with this is that I use Google Drive for my consumer, for my personal stuff, and actually I've used it less and less as I use ComConnect File Sync. Um, and then I use ComConnect for all of my business work. And to show you some of what can happen with this product that can just be really amazing is that you know, I personally am a small business individual um, and I'm offering this independent, so I'm an independent software vendor. I'm not a Citrix, I'm not, I, I am a Citrix partner, but I'm not one of these big guys. However, the, this product is developed with another independent software vendor and it is an amazing product. It's also a product that you are not going to see installed automatically on your phone. It is placed in a number of, there are hundreds of thousands of users of the system out there, but in general, the, the system is branded and that it's labeled to that company and it reinforces the firm brand. Our promise to you through offering ComConnect for FileSync and being your trusted cloud service provider is that we promise to minimize these risks that we mentioned earlier in the webinar and support you with your file access needs. That we understand that you and your employees, you need a file sync service solution. You also need it to support your business and make your life easier. You know, having, I think about a true business file grade service as insurance. The insurance is something that we all need and you hope you don't have to call in on, but we're still going to do it because we know that there's disability insurance, for example, is an often underinsured location for people that it's a 30% chance or a 36% chance, something like that, that a person is going to have like a three month stay of being disabled somewhere in their career. And in the same way, and that it's like 8% of people ever get disability insurance. In the same way, you wanna have assurance, because this isn't an insurance policy, but you wanna assure your data, that you wanna make sure that you can roll back to the day before, that you wanna make sure that you can have your file sync service truly serve your firm. File sync has a trifecta of services. The, something like Dropbox or Google Drive, they're great, but they and they also do sync. 
and they enable you to share, but what they don't allow you to do is back up. And so ComConnect File Sync has it so that you can actually go to any folder, any file on your system, on your computer that isn't in your cloud. And you, you can right click on that file and click on backup and a backup will immediately start in that folder and basically anytime you make any changes to a file anywhere in that folder, it'll be logged and will be put into the cloud. It'll be accessible from your mobile device and it'll be secure the whole time. Um, the ComConnect file sync is, it, it's SEC, FINRA, and HIPAA uh, compliant. Um, for the most part, if you look at the web page that I talk about FINRA compliance, but the reason why I talk about FINRA compliance is that it's the most strict. And if you're a hybrid individual, that you're going to need to obey FINRA compliance over SEC compliance, that you are going to need to have that um, in perpetuity record keeping versus a three-year record requirement. ComConnect File Sync does allow you to have a number of features in these regards. The, it records revisions of all files. The, uh, every time you press save, it keeps another copy of that file. And you can restore it at any point. You can also put in a limit and say, I only want to hold those revisions for three years. And that at that point, that we can start to save some hard drive space and uh, let that stuff uh, get cut. And just, I do want to point out to everybody, because I'm thinking that not everybody on the call is a regulated individual, that they, you don't have to be regulated to need business grade file sync. The business grade file sync is for a business that you want to use. Um, I've had, I'll give you two examples of situations that have been unfortunate for me. That, I had a developer who was a close personal friend of a long period of time and was coming in and helping me out on various projects and he had um, some horrible family tragedies and it was a serious blow to his morale and head and basically he kind of went out as a part of that process and he was in the middle of projects and I was, he was working on his machine. And just due to the nature of that process, I didn't, I didn't get that information. I, I did put a deposit down. I didn't give him the final payment, but I lost my data as a result of that situation. Um, another developer where I was, I was working on a, an enterprise grade product um, that I had an ongoing relationship going on with this organization and that they had a developer working as a third party and it was actually, the, that developer was great. The middle party was the problem and we ended up having to, Wagnercom had to back out of that uh, contract and that I lost a lot of money and didn't have anything to show for it because um, I didn't have that developer working on something like ComConnect File Sync. That if I had just simply had this product at the time, and had her working on an instance of ComConnect on her server or on her personal computer that when things went south, that basically I would go in and uh, just unlink her computer and I'd still have all of my information and it'd just be removed from her computer and we'd be going on with our days. So ComConnect, like a lot of the other services like Dropbox that you've seen, they do have the little checkbox and um, and this is the brandless version of it. Um, the, it has a little checkbox, has a little sinky sign when something's sinking. If there is a, a transmission problem, it has a little X, you know, all sorts of features like that. But the other thing, the, it has some other features as well, such as secure share. Um, on this slide, actually, what I want to point out is that you can see here, it says synced folder. This is the brandless version of the product. And the <laughs> groups like, like I like ShareFile as a product. It is a business grade file sync service. And if you're interested in ShareFile over something like ComConnect, let me know. I'm a Citrix, Share, uh, Citrix, Citrix Sauce partner, and I can connect you up with that group. But, it, and they do have the ability to brand the portal. But what they don't have is the ability to truly brand the product. And the, when you use ComConnect File Sync, that this little Rosinky icon right here can actually be your firm brand. And, the, and it also, when you're on your mobile device and you open up the mobile device, the, that also you'll actually see your firm and company logo. And it reinforces the, the firm 
culture atmosphere cloud that ComConnect is your business's cloud. And so as a result, when you open up the app on your phone that you see your company branding, that when you have a new employee come on board, that they come on and they get onto the system and they say, oh, wow, this is, you know, the Pelsu company's private cloud system. And here is the little P logo that is their logo. And I'm going into their information and saying, wow, cool. Okay, here and here's the sales team and here's the marketing stuff and being able to also control visibility. Um, the Common Connect allows you to access your files from anywhere and it provides each individual user their own private cloud. Um, that you can have this service installed on your iPad, have it installed on your personal computer, and then have it installed on your desktop at home, have it installed at the office and at home. And um, to give you another scenario in my life, the, the computer I'm operating this webinar on, um, it's, it's, it's touchpad is a little bit extra touchy, let's put it that way. And, and I have insurance on it and it needs to go into Dell. Um, and what I'm going to do in the interim is that actually when this computer has any sorts of problems or if I'm just encoding a video, I move over to my desktop and just pick up right where I was and um, start just, I open the same program and just start working and don't have any sorts of slowdowns. And actually if I have a place where something like I'm encoding a video, I can actually end up really double timing my work and really doing, I'm, I'm you know, business owner so I don't get a double bill but at least I can double hour in that sort of a situation, which is great. Um, and also folks, if you have any questions on any of these different components, please let me know. If you'd like me to explain anything in more detail, please let me know that as well. Um, and just put that into the chat box. I'm watching that on the other window. Um, this slide right here is showing you, this is, these are all the Android apps. I actually like the look of the iPhone and iPad app a little bit better, just the, um, the graphic design is a little bit slicker, but I think that this is great. Um, but what you can see, you can't actually have the icon itself um, be branded on your on your telephone because of the how the app stores work, that we have to have it so that there is one app that is submitted to the app store and given approval rather than thousands. Um, but when you're inside of the app that you can actually, you can get access to all the files that you have saved in your ComConnect as well as everything that is in your backup. Um, that you can actually, you can upload files from your phone um, that you can take like your whole photo directory and upload it for example. And, um, and that it saves all of these files in its own pen. And that if someone went in and your phone got stolen and they, someone plugged it in and tried to go in and see and get into this information and you hadn't wiped the phone already, um, they actually still couldn't get into the device or get into your information that there's a pin that you can require to be put in here. Um, and, uh, and that also uh, on a data level that it's encrypted and they won't be able to look at it. The other part of the system is that it allows you to collaborate with ease. Um, whether you have employees or you're a part of a network, I know I have a number of individuals on the call who are part of uh, at least one financial planning network, the, uh, a group of independent planners that are all working together. They, with this system <clears throat> that you can have your sales team on one share, that you can have your marketing team on another share, have your secretary on its own share and executives as well and make it so that the secretary never sees any of the information that the executives are on there if you're you know a small planning practice with two or three planners there and, and you know some receptionist at the front desk you know you want to make it so that each planner can get to the, the clients that they're working on and that you also want to make sure that the receptionist doesn't see any of that confidential client information with ComConnect file sync, this is basically just a click of a couple of buttons and it's really nice and straightforward. The system also has intra organization sharing capabilities. So if you're on something like the XY planning network that you can actually, and we're planning on doing this, um, having information that you can share between organizations on that level. And that it's really, you can, from a metaphor perspective, you can think about how each user, you as a ComConnect user, have your cloud, 
and then another user has their cloud and that these team shares are the bridge between these clouds and it's the place where the clouds literally overlap if you think back to that slide at the beginning of this presentation um, that where you had the blue orange and green clouds that you want to have the right commingling there but you don't want to um, you know there's certain information you can't share so what else do I want to show you on here um, that uh, this is you can't see it real real well on this and actually um, no I don't want to pull up my own file system just there is some confidential information in there um, um, no, I can do that. Give me just one second here, guys. And hi, everybody. I do want to ask you, remind you, if you have any questions, we have this poll over here on the right side of the window. And actually, for guess it's going to be like that. And um, please get in there and um, and make sure to ask those. I'm actually going to end and, and reset the poll. Um, just so you know, with the poll, that we mostly had Google Drive users, a couple people on ShareFile, um, and some other. I would be curious, folks, if you could put that into the chat, what are the other services that you guys are using? I'm, I'm definitely curious. And uh, there's... There are a couple more options out there. I just wanted to uh, make sure to include the, the main ones for you. Um, but to show you what Calm Connect looks like actually on my system, the, here we go. Um, so you can see here is my labeling and my branding, and you can actually have the Calm Connect right here. And, um, and that I do have my Google Drive. And um, But when you go into Calm Connect, the, each one of these little guys with the little share right here. So this is actually a getting started guide. And when you get on the system that I share this into your world and that I actually use another technology that's a part of the system called file locking. And so you can't edit anything in the directory, but I give you access to it, read only access. Um, and you can play a number of videos and get access to the end user training guide, that sort of stuff. Um, over here, this financial planning 3.0 directory, this is a, a book that my dad's writing and I'm helping him with. Um, and we're going to be coming out with, you're going to probably hear more about that later on this summer. And um, for example, also those of you that were at the next gen gathering, that we actually have a uh, how that information was sent at the end of the gathering was through ComConnect. And I used the, the white labeling and put the next gen branding on it and then made this team share here and uh, with Lori's help ended up she put all of the different uh, pictures that she took of all the the whiteboard pieces that we worked up over our sessions up there and I ended up putting up the contact list and other things like that and the end user experience was great the, I used MailChimp and we sent it out through there but we sent out one email it had the same link from the top and the bottom the user ends up clicking on that pulls them into a web page if you want them to log in, they have to log in, and then they click on download zip, and your client ends up getting the information from you through a branded portal, and they didn't come to Dropbox, they didn't come to Google, and you're not reinforcing their brands, you're enforcing your brand. And uh, this is really gonna help if you have, um, I have one client who's in the media business, and I think they know some high-end clients, and I think it's important for him to not have Google or ShareFile be the logo that they're looking at when someone comes in to go and download that information. Um, let me check on some questions. Um, yeah, Garnet, but that's, that's, I think I was already answering your question, though I didn't see that. So what that looks like is, um, let me just take this for example right here. And uh, there is also a Microsoft Outlook add-in. Uh, wait, something's, hold on, let me go, let me just go right here. And so you go, you right click, is this, I'm, I am having a different visibility because of the Google, because of the, the webinar service. Um, let me do it this way. I haven't seen that before, guys. So what I'm going to do is 
dead is take you over actually into the web portal because that'll make the most sense. There. So this is the web-based portal of ComConnect File Sync. And um, to show you what the sharing to clients looks like, and also you can see the, the lock here substantially more easily. I just, the icons get small. Um, and let's go into, what's a good example? Oh, and this is actually kind of cool. I want to show you this feature. I have, I have this selected right now, but you don't actually delete something from ComConnect file sync at first. The, you can get it off your hard drive, get the additional hard drive space, um, but it saves a copy in the cloud so that you can always revert. And, uh, and that just provides a part of that data assurance. And so Garnet was asking, how, what does the third party share look like? So the team party stuff is between other users and who, on the system who have their own cloud. But when you're providing this to a client, um, it pops up like this. And there's a bunch of different options that are in here, Garnet. Um, the, this right here is the public share variant. And even though it is a public share, as far as anybody with this URL, if they click on this URL, they will go to this page. The system is still tracking number of views. And it also has this functionality right here called notify on download. And so if you um, send this, I actually use this for some of the lead manuals. Right? Not right now, I have in the past, but where if someone goes through and signs up and wants to get the Finner FAQ, for example, that they go in and when they get to the end of the, the funnel and they're clicking on the download notification, they're hopping into a ComConnect file sync system and that when they click on this little download button, you can see in the background, um, I get an email. And uh, you can also do a couple other features here. I think you're already seeing what the, the policy, but if you need to have you know, something delivered like quarterly report or something like that, or even you're in the middle of a business deal and you want to put a little bit of pressure on the situation. Um, scarcity is powerful. You can set an expiration date or you can also set a number of download limits. If it's, you know, you want to only deliver once and you don't want to have this be, you know, widespread to the public, this is a useful feature. Um, the next step right here, if you're doing a secure share, and, um, I'm going to use somebody who I know is on the system. And so this is a ComConnect user. She's an architect. Um, and the system's branded to her. And, and I think it looks great. Both the, uh, her, she's a great logo. And I think it, uh, it hopefully looks good on her system. I haven't actually seen the computer, but I know the mobile app looks, looks awesome. And so you just put the person's email into the system. And, um, and then... Uh, it's because of how I did it this time, but you can actually set it so that um, that the person can, uh, if you set, if you share an entire folder, you can set it so that the user can actually upload back to it, um, and you can give them delete or non-delete properties. And so, like for the client portal example, um, let me even just literally run through what I think that should look like right here for you. Um, so, create a folder, client B, let's go with that, and um, let that folder get made, give me a second there, and, um, and then click on share, and then we'll uh, even put Oh, and it's different options. You don't have, because it's all folder, you can't do a download notification. And the system tries to provide the right functionality in the right places. So now you can see that checkbox. And so for this situation, that you could have one folder where you have the client's information, have a subfolder where you have the information for everything that you're working on, and then have this folder where you put the delivered files, 
And, um, and that way your client can log in here, get access to all of their files and then set it so they can actually even upload it and, and sure why not just to uh, uh, make it so that they can delete at the same time. Um, that person, Gail's now been notified. I'll, I'll let her know. She's a personal friend. So um, she's now been notified that she has access to this and that she can actually use her credentials in the system to come to the login page, log into ComConnect, um, and be able to download a zip of any files that are in here, whether it's a client report or, or whatever have you. Um, I want to hop up back over the presentation here for a minute guys we're coming up to the top of the hour and i want to make sure that i cover all of our questions also if you guys have any additional questions please let me know okay and let's go back to this here and um all of these features I've been showing you, I just like to show you guys with actual, with like seeing it in motion that you can go and that you can right click on on, uh, on your system and actually click and get that share link. Um, that didn't work because of Google Hangouts. I actually, I haven't uh, seen that specific functionality before. That's gotta be because we are in the middle of a live broadcast. So here you can see all these different login, you know, how to do the secure share, the public share, um, that you can notify entire teams. Um, you can actually, you can have, if you have teams on ComConnect file sync, it will. Um, you can notify groups at once. The, it also, this system does provide all of the various uh, reporting that you're gonna wanna see, whether it's a user activity, whether someone deletes a file, um, all of that sort of stuff. And, um, and just because we're coming up to the top of the hour, I wanna, I wanna go and, and put some of this stuff in here. And um, what I'd like to do with just everybody who's on the call, and if you're on the call and learning about ComConnect and you'd like to take me up on this offer, email me and we'll make arrangements, please. And um, so what we're going to do is, um, here, display this offer. And um, I'm going to give you guys your first month free, the, the a part of what I offer with ComConnect File Sync is that I offer a uh, six month money back guarantee because I want you to actually use this system. If you guys start to use the system and you put in a couple of MP3 files, which actually could even be excluded, um, or you put in, uh, you know, just, just information that doesn't really matter, that you won't end up actually getting a real experience of what this looks like. That you need to have the moment of, oh, I need to get this file to a client and they need to have, I want them to log in to get that. I want to know when, I want to be notified when they download it. And I also don't want them to be able to send this over to somebody else in the company. So I'm going to make it a secure login. And, um, and that way, you know, I know when they did it and I know who did it. Um, anyone who signs up, on this webinar right here. This is just gonna take you over to the main registration page. If you're a part of the XY Planning Network, um, register through that portal and we'll, we'll get the rest of everything else lined up with you guys too. But I will give you that month free just as part of the process. I have, um, I'm making 15 of these available to folks on the call. And I'm home, sorry about that. And so, Click on that register button, get in there and um, and try it out and let me know what it is that, you know, and let's get you in on this system. You have nothing to worry about because uh, if you decide that the system isn't for you, you have six months to make that decision. And, um, and personally, the more that I use this system, the more I love it. So um, check that out for me. And um, What else do I want to show you guys? And a lot of the rest of this deck. Oh, this is an important one. Um, though nobody on this live call is FINRA regulated, um, if you have a, off a server in your office, and that situation with Ed, that Ed Jertsen was referring to, the ComConnect does have what's called file server enablement on it. And basically what that means is that we can actually make it so that it's as secure or more secure than VPN definitely more secure than FTP and you never have to put in any credentials and that you can be traveling around wherever you want wherever you are and um, like a, 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 I have a manufacturing firm that's on the system 
and um, and that they have a sales team and that they can go in and log into the company on-premises server uh, that's in Denver, whether they're in New York or Chicago or San Francisco or China. It doesn't matter. They can get in. They can get their information um, and uh, good stuff there. So, folks, I do still want to continue to ask you, okay, okay, um, you know, let any continue to give me any questions that you've got, and um, I'm just going to read the questions that are in the chat right here. Been keeping a little bit of an eye on it. Um, okay, no, we're caught up. Great. But if you have any other questions, let me know, and I'm just going to take the last three minutes of our time here to, to show you uh, a couple of the other pieces of functionality. And actually, I'm going to do that over on um, the web because I think that it's a lot more demonstrative. So a couple other pieces of functionality here. Um, I'm going to hop back up to my files. And uh, I showed you that deleted functionality where you, anything that you delete that you can um, go back and see that again. And that after you have the, the show deleted, you can, you can restore anything that was deleted. You can also um, permanently delete it. And, um, and that you can actually, this, this functionality right here, so you have a virus hit your computer and just destroy everything that you can actually say things were okay two days ago, put that date into here, and you can do this on a directory level or for your entire installation and roll it back to that point in time, which I think is, is pretty awesome. Um, some of the other functionality, I actually want to jump into what it looks like for your organization, that you can throttle bandwidth, that these systems, like something like Dropbox, Google Drive has throttling, Dropbox doesn't last uh, with what I currently understand, and um, it can take over your local internet and make it so that it just seems like your computer isn't responding for hell or high water, and what's actually going on is that all your bandwidth is getting choked out by this program. And, um, and with ConConnect file sync, you can actually, you can choke it both specifically on, um, you can choke it on the device and you can choke it organization wide. Some of the other functionality that's really cool is that you can actually, you can exclude specific extensions if you need to, um, that you can also have it so that if you require double authentication and you want to have a, uh, text message go out, the, the system also can do that where um, in order to actually log into the client portal, they not only have to have access to the email that gave them the username and password, but actually have the phone on next to them that would have that same, uh, um, you know, then they'd have to put in a little code from the telephone. But from a functional perspective, what that is, is it's two ways of checking to make sure that it's the same person. So you're really sure that it's actually them. Um, we've talked about the uh, branding. This is this is actually more for my world than for you guys. Um, and you can customize templates and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, the the file locking functionality that you can actually have it so that the system just when you open any of like a Microsoft Word file, then in and it's in a team share that is just going to automatically lock that file. So you can't have someone else on the from your team come in and uh, accidentally open it and create a collision. Um, there also is collision functionality where if you do happen to cause some sort of versioning problem, the system automatically detects that and tries to make it so, um, and asks you to resolve that. So folks, we've got, um, there's, there's definitely, we've had a bunch of people on the call, but not as many at this point in the hour, and we just broached over the top of the hour. Um, we have one last question. Um, Gail asks, does the file structure look the same on CompConnect as on my computer? And the answer is, is, is yes, that each individual person's cloud is going to look the same. Um, that when we go over here to the My Files, that this is actually a perfect, that this matches up exactly with what I have on my file system. Um, 
but uh, it's gonna, not going to be, for example, like the financial planning 3.0 that I, I'm working on sharing with my dad. Um, that he doesn't see any of these other directories, that he sees this one directory. And I also, this is uh, the place where our uh, clouds cross, uh, um, but he doesn't see any of my confidential information and I don't see any of the rest of his. We just have this one thing that we're working on together and that's where we keep that information. So at this point, guys, we've gone the full hour, that this has been a great call, that we've gotten some, some awesome questions coming in. Um, I actually had my uh, support computer just ran out of battery on me and um, we've been, yeah, we're just over an hour. So if you have any more questions, please let me know, but I'm assuming not. And um, if you have any questions, just reach out and send me an email. I'm here, I'm available and um, I'm happy to serve you. So uh, let me know what it is that that would look like and thank you. This has been a great tech table talk and I appreciate your time and uh, looking forward to the next call. And uh, our next Tech Table Talk, we have two coming up. We have, I'm going to do a one on compliant and effective LinkedIn profiles, tentatively at the end of the month, but gosh darn, it's a lot of scheduling and a lot of work to get each one of these pulled together. And then I'm also gonna have Advizon join the call. Um, and they're an all-in-one provider they're a little bit new on the scene, but a bunch of Morningstar guys and a really cool product. Um, and uh, definitely log into either of those calls and um, let me know what it is that you think. And I just want to say thank you for attending this Tech Table Talk. This has been awesome and uh, looking forward to next time. Take care.